stretch ourselves um, and, and, and keep moving forward. Okay. So you got to find your motivation, uh, find your why, you know, Eric Thomas, very uh, uh, famous motivational speaker, always says that what's your why, why are you doing this? And always answer that question for yourself. Why are you doing this? Um, so, and then, you know, I think, you know, since we can't be in class right now, we'll, we'll kind of figure out how, you know, the opening of California goes and everything like that. Um, but until then, um, we'll see how, you know, cause I think, man, wrestling is probably, I don't know. I, I don't know what the percentages are, but I'll just make something up 30% in ring and it's 70% mental, you know, it's, 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 you, it's all about uh, really psychology and how to uh, bring the crowd up, bring the crowd down and really touch their heart. And I hope we can uh, uh, kind of go over that and teach you guys that. Um, and like I said, a lot of the times it's going to go into your head. You're not going to understand it. You're not going to understand it. And then you lo sometimes there's that you wake up one day and it clicks for you. Um, so if you find yourself treading water and not understanding, but you're still taking the notes, write the notes down because it's definitely going to help you guys. Okay. So what we'll go ahead and start with is, uh, is the match breakdown. And like I said, Darwin, I got Ruby here and I, uh, Jake is here. Um, even Hyde, if you guys feel like you guys want to jump in, uh, since you guys are skilled in, in uh, doing matches, um, I definitely would love to hear your, your take on it. So um, just starting out. And then um, once again, going into, hey, this is one certain way to call a match. There are many different ways to call a match, many different ways to tell a story. So I don't want you to go into this saying this is the one way. This is a way to do it. This is the way I do it. And I think it's an easy way for people that are, that are breaking into the business to, uh, to learn it. Or even if you're learning psychology for the first time, because I learned it for the first time seven, eight years into my, into my wrestling career. Um, so I think it's a little bit of an easy way to break it down. And I think when you, uh, what we're gonna also going to do is probably end the week with watching a match. I think a lot of the uh, Bret Hart matches are really broke down on how we're breaking down the matches. Um, so we'll get to actually see what we're talking about. Um, and then, um, you know, guarantee, you know, a lot of the matches that I do and uh, the students there at, at the, uh, the wrestling school will have matches online that will go ahead and watch and really see what we're talking about and how we're breaking it down. Um, so, you know, really starting with the, uh, the match breakdown, I like to break it down in about six or seven steps. And I want to run all those through you right now, um, uh, just to, so you get the idea. You know, you're coming out, number one, I always like to say is established face for heel, uh, face and heel, whether that's with your gear, your music. Um, or your facial expressions, um, but you definitely want to establish your, uh, your face first heel, um, which then um, is going to lead to, you know, some wrestling. We're not going to go, we, we can go straight to a face shine, but we're, you know, I like to break it down a little bit and wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. I tell everybody and, and uh, you know, if you've been in, in, in class with me, I'll tell you guys, why don't you wrestle a little bit more? Um, because the Marquis is wrestling. And I think that's just the, the, the old schooler in me. Um, but yeah, I like to establish face first heel and then we're going to wrestle until the, the heel gets, gets, um, gets frustrated and he does, he does the initial cut. And that's, that's me, you know, me grabbing, uh, uh, Darwin in a headlock and he counters me with two counters. I grab him back in a headlock and he counters me again with two counters. He, I grab him again in a headlock. He counters me again. I get so fucking pissed that I punch him in the face in the middle of a wrestling match. And that's like my, my initial first cut. In my head as a heel, I'm thinking I'm going to beat his ass. But what comes next? What comes next, Darwin, after I give you that initial cut? You're, I, let, me get you off, let me get you off mute, my man. Yeah, you're on, you're on mute. Where is Mr. Here, hold on. Okay, we're going to get, there you go. Now you're off mute. Can you hear? Can you speak? Yeah. There we go. Yes. What comes after that initial cut, Darwin? That would be my initial shine right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You go right in there to the face shine. You know, hey, what's the, what's the face shine? Hey, it could be two orange drags and a drop kick. It could be something in, way more incredible. But whatever you're going to do in your shine, whatever you're going to do in your shine, make sure that it's not bigger than maybe your comeback or even your finish. Um, I like to, to think about what uh, Sin Bodhi teaches was what he says that uh, uh, Jake and Snake taught him is that wrestle by numbers. You know, um, you know, if, uh, I don't know, if a shoulder tackle is one, um, you know, an arm drag is two, the, the moves should be getting bigger and bigger, you know. A uh, clothesline would be three. And if we do a three, 
maybe, and this is me, hey, all rules are meant to be broken, you know? Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should not go back down uh, 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 moves. You know what I mean? Uh, so if we do that clothesline, don't go back down and do that. Uh, hold on, I got somebody speaking here. Let me see if I can get these guys. Hey, Ray Romero Jr. and Milton, can you guys put your, uh, your, uh, your gimmicks on mute? Please, for some reason. All right, so they've quieted down anyway. All right, so, um, but yeah, wrestling by numbers, guys. So, you know, we're doing our shoulder tackle, which leads to a body slam. And if we do a body slam, maybe we don't go back to a shoulder tackle. We want our numbers to go higher and higher and higher, which leads to, you know, um, when you do your cutoff. So every move is going to get bigger and bigger, you know, or excuse me, which leads to your comeback after the heels cut off, you know? And I think a lot of the times um, people will, will do a cutoff and man, they'll want to do like a pile driver in a cutoff, you know? And of course that does work. I hope that your finish is bigger than the pile driver. Now, hey, yeah, cause if you're a new pile driver, there's no fucking way that your finish should be a roll up. You know what I mean? If you've already hit a fucking pile driver, then forget it, dude. Like, why should a, a guy stay down on a roll up on a finish? So if you hit a pile driver, your finish is going to have to be bigger. Your comeback's going to have to be bigger. If that is what you choose to be your comeback, you know. Um, like, let me ask you, and I know we're kind of jumping around on it. Let me ask Ruby. Um, if so, I, 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 you give me, you give me your shine, and I cut you off. And, you know, I'm giving you some heat, whatever, whatever the case is, I'm working your back and then you're going to make your comeback. What would be something um, that your comeback uh, would be? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm all confused here. I'm sorry. Cause I'm, I'm looking for your unmute button, but I got it. All right. What would your cutoff be? What would your cutoff be, uh, Ruby? You're the heel. I'm the face. I'm so I'm, I'm putting you off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just gave you an arm drag, arm drag, uh, body slam, drop kick, and you powdered out, and you're gonna cut me off. What's your cutoff gonna be? Maybe we're, you didn't powder out. You're in the middle of the ring. Uh, at that given point, my cutoff's gonna be essentially the biggest move to date in that match. So, if it was me, like just me, uh, let me see. If I'm very heel, I'm gonna cheat for my cutoff. Um, okay. But definitely the biggest move to that point for me, I would probably big clothesline for me. Uh, like you're looking for my actual move? <laughs> no, just oh, just anything that you would that you would particularly choose to do. You know, I guess what what the point that I'm trying to make is that a lot of the times the cutoffs don't have to necessarily be huge. You know? No, I would do like a big a big clothesline, big lariat, or you know big boot or something, something that if I'm heel, I'm going to be something that's kind of shitty, probably, like crappy. Yeah, exactly. Because we have to show that, that, that we're heel. And a lot of the time, like a lot of the times I like to think that I don't want to out wrestle my face ever, ever, ever. I want to cut corners. And the only reason I out wrestle them is because I choke them. I gouge their eyes. I kick them in the nuts. Uh, you know, some kind of, or, you know, what uh, Chaz always used to say is that he used to be the heel through aggression, not necessarily through cheating, you know? And I, I, I agree with that. You don't necessarily have to be a cheater uh, to be a heel. You could be a heel through aggression, you know? Um, one of the, the cutoffs that I always like is just the up and over and you step to the side and kick him in the gut. What I like to think also is my cutoff is going to lead to, uh, number one, what my finish is going to be. So if my finish is a, I don't know, we'll say a leg drop from the top rope. Maybe I, wanna, I want to um, explore the fact that a leg drop from the top rope is gonna hurt a neck. So maybe my cutoff should be a neck breaker, um, you know, something of that sort. Um, and then maybe, and then which leads to now, I don't even have to think about my heat. My heat is gonna be working Ruby's neck and beating her neck up. And she's gonna have to overcome that. You know, um, if she's going to, in the middle of that heat, in order for us to keep the, the fans engaged, she's going to have to stay alive and fight back. 
she has to stay alive and fight back. I hate giving heat. Uh, and if you've been in the ring with me, a lot of the times you will hear me uh, tell you guys, fight back, punch me in the gut. Where are we going? It doesn't matter. I just need you to swing at me. I need you to fight me. I need us, I need us to look like it's a back and forth because it's going to come to the point where they're going to say, hey, stop beating up Jay Douglas because you should just finish him already. Why can't you, why can't you beat, him, beat him in the match? And one of the worst things I hate as a heel sometimes, depends what story you're trying to tell, but I like hate is when you're given the heat and you keep going for pins as a heel. Unless you're telling the story that each pin I go for and they keep kicking out, I keep getting frustrated and frustrated, I think that's a good story. Otherwise, you got to protect your moves. Um, uh, so, like, if you're giving, you know, some of your cool moves in the heat and they're kicking out of it, you know, that, that's going to really water down your, your finish, you know? Um, and so I think as a heel, I like to I – wouldn't, I, I wouldn't do anything really uh, – I want to say – I wouldn't say cool. I think everything I do is fucking cool. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do anything to outshine my face, especially – I wouldn't want to do any move in my heat that is bigger than uh, my face's comeback, you know? Um, and, and a lot of the times we want to get you to that point where you are in the heat thinking of what your comeback is, not necessarily you called it in the back, you know? I like to, for you to feel the passion, you know? Um, uh, build the magic. And when you're in that ring and, and, and you're just, you're, you start putting all your training together and you start thinking of what move do I need to do to make a comeback? And sometimes we have to call an audible, you know, like, hey, man, they're giving me so much heat. And, and he's kind of outshining what my comeback is going to be. So maybe you got to up the ante a little bit. And if, and if, and if you're great, like, like Jake Atlas, man, you can call it on the fly. But you also have to remember who you're working with. You might be able to call something on somebody. And if they cannot follow the lead, follow your lead, then it's, it's going to be hard times, you know. So that's definitely advanced when we're calling matches when we're in the ring, but as long as we're following this formula, I mean, man, it makes it so easy. You know, I, I wanted to actually have a printout that I could put on there. I haven't really explored the Zoom to kind of put another, uh, another uh, page up. Maybe I'll talk to Pete and we'll, we'll get something going where we can actually have a match going and we'll break it down and have actually a paper up of actually the, the points that I'm making. So we're on number four, which is the heat. You know, given the heat, I'm cutting them off. What I want to do is, is whatever my cutoff is, is leads is my finish, right? So that's the body part I'm working. So maybe I'm, maybe my finish is a power slam. So then I'm going to work the back, you know, maybe my finish is an ankle lock. So obviously I'm going to work the, the ankle, you know, the knee and, and so on and so forth. And I think that really structures your match. So you don't just go out there and do every cool move that you learned that week in training. You know, we don't want to do every move, you know, we want to, and it's really hard. I get it. We learn a move and we, we want to do six of them. Hey, maybe do three of them. Maybe do two. Maybe do fucking one of them, man. And, and, and drop kicks, clotheslines, and arm drags don't count as your cool moves. You know what I mean? Maybe your one cool move is the power slam. Can you work in a match and get that one big move over? Maybe, two, maybe you and your opponent have, have a, a, a big move each. And that's it. I got a power slam and, and, and Ruby's got her rope, uh, neck rope, uh, neck breaker, you know, and that's it. And we're building off that. You know, what I like to think about is if that's the case, right, going back to less is more. So if my one move is that power slam or her one move is that rope hung neck breaker, then we're going to have to do a lot of teasing, an incredible amount of teasing. I want to go for that move. In my heat, I want to go for my power slam because I know. That's my finisher. And maybe I train the fans to know that's my finisher. And if I hit my finisher, I know it's over, you know, which leads into you got to hit your finisher in order to make a false finish work. You know, if you hit your power slam and they kick out of it every single time, it, it deludes it again. It waters your false finishes down. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so, you know, we, even if I'm just in my heat and I'm giving her heat and I'm keep working her back because I know I want to hit her with that power slam. And maybe we think of cool ways that she counters the power slam. If that's the case, I like to not catch that move traditionally. Maybe we're doing a spot where 
uh, Ruby Rays does a, a leapfrog and I catch her and power slam her, you know, out of the blue. And I say, so I think, you know, doing a lot of teases really extends your match. It builds that anticipation, right? Story, we have to have story. We have to have anticipation. We have to make, we have to have reality, you know, and suspense, you know, we need that suspense. And, and how are we going to get that suspense? By teasing these moves. You know, I think I learned that in, in doing death matches is that you don't just go for the move, you tease it. And the more you tease it, the more the fans feel it. They keep feeling it, but you haven't done it yet. You keep feeling it, you haven't done it yet. And then when you finally hit that move, and that's why when Stone Cold finally hits that stunner, everyone goes ape shit. You know what I mean? Everyone loses it because that's what they've been waiting for. Really, we don't care about the other stuff. You know, we're because we're, we're building it and building it and building it. And that's why he'll kick the guy in the gut. He'll go for the stunner. He'll, uh, Rock will push him off and they'll go into another spot, you know? Um, and I think that anticipation um, leads to that suspense, which leads to a great match, you know? And I think that really goes back to less is more. What do I do in my heat? You work the body part, you know? You work the body part. Kick, stomp, punch. And I think that actually gets you to become more creative. Don't think about wrestling the body part. Think about how can I hurt the body part? You know, um, if I am uh, working Ruby's back, maybe I want, her to, I want her to use her ring too. Absolutely, I think it's important uh, that she uses her ring. So she doesn't just, if I'm giving her heat, she, she just doesn't sit in the corner. You know what I mean? I want her, I want to hit her in the corner. I want her to roll over hang herself on the ropes so I can choke her. After I choke her, I want her to maybe stand up, stagger up to the corner. Because if she does that, and I like to do that when I'm taking heat, because if I do that, I think I give my, my, my heel uh, more ideas to think about. Um, you know, so if, I, if she staggers up to the corner, maybe I should whip her to the other side and just tell her, sell your back and follow your knees. You know, and she sells her back, falls her knees, she might roll out to the middle of the ring. All right, maybe I'll elbow drop the back, uh, your, your lower back, you know. But if 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 you're if you're taking heat, constantly moving around, constantly selling, having your uh, be able to turn your gears up and down. What hurts, you know, stepping on your lower back doesn't hurt as much as I drop that elbow on the lower back. So you got to have those gears. We should hear those gears, you know. We should hear your 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 grunts and moans. And I think, especially now with a lot of the guys wrestling. Um, um, with no fans on TV, you know, and maybe Jake Atlas can uh, can speak on this. I think it uh, it really helps when the two wrestlers are more vocal. Um, what what's your take on that? Uh, is Jake still with us here? What's your take on that, uh, Mr. Atlas? As I know, you've you've wrestled these, uh, and and we all have. We've wrestled these dojo matches, but we've had the, you know, at least the camera guy popping for us sometimes. So. Um, what's your take on, you know, making more noise or not making more noise or what's your take on wrestling? Um, yeah, I think uh, I definitely think that, hi guys, by the way, good to be with you guys. Um, so kind of going off what Joey's saying, it's definitely important to get into the habit of selling vocally what you are doing, um, whether that is towards your, your opponent, um, or, or even just vocalizing what's actually happening, uh, is, especially in a time like this where there's no one around, um, you want to take advantage of the fact that you you want to make it more personal now. Um, you want to make it more one on one, and it's so contradictory to what you know. Maybe I don't know if you guys have touched on this. Some of you may have. It's so contradictory of what we've been told, where it's like wrestle for the people in the seats all the way at the top. Now it's wrestle with who you are, with, you know, be in that moment with the person that you're in. But it almost reminds you that that, that should never go away, even when the crowds come back. Uh, it's, it, it should allow you to maybe make it become a hybrid of being in that moment with your partner, with, your, with who you are wrestling, um, no matter what. And right now uh, is the perfect time to, to do that. When, if you guys ever resume training again before there's a live crowd, um, it's definitely something to uh, 
consider because the more you're vocal and the more you're selling what's going on, the more the person at home is, is becoming more invested into what's going on. Um, I'm sure you guys have been watching some matches that either we've done or any other companies have done where there is no crowd and you can immediately tell which ones stand out to you. It's the ones that are, you know, being more vocal and, and talking more. So I think that's a great point that Joey brought up. Yeah, I, I, it's it's so important. I think guys like uh, Tyler Bateman, um, he's very vocal in his selling to the point of I've asked him in a mill, you, are you okay, dude? And he's like, yeah, Bubba, I'm good, just selling, which makes me feel like an ass. You know, I'm supposed to be the man, and I'm over here like, fuck, he's out working me, you know? Um, another one was uh, when I wrestled New Jack, very loud and vocal to the point of like, you know, New Jack's crazy. Am I really hurting him, or is he just selling? And you, you figure it out. You know, as as you as you as 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 you uh, as, as you work more. But selling vocally is so important. You know, and it's not just going out there on one gear. Ah ah ah! ah that gets annoying. It got. And when I talk about those gears, the gears go up and down, right? So we go from maybe it's just facial expressions and a tear coming down your eye to to extreme pain and i always remember strict extreme pain when i think it was wrestlemania 17 um uh the rock versus stone cold and i think the rock had to hit stone cold with two rock bottoms and when he hit him with that second one when the rock hit stone cold with the second rock bottom like you saw the pain in in stone cold's face he was trying like even when uh, at least i want to imagine even when he when the rock was pinning him it Stone Cold wasn't trying to kick out as much as he was trying to get up because it was so painful to be on his back at that moment, you know, and, and that goes so far, so tremendous, you know, take a power driver, bounce back up and I give you a power driver, man, that's, that does work. It was, I guarantee you somebody's going to make it fucking work. Does it work a lot for beginners? Probably not, you know, um, for the new guys, you know, I think if you follow, if you follow it and you follow that story, doing less. Right, because if we're if we're new, man, we we don't got much anyway, you know. So if you're doing less, the stuff you do hit is gonna mean so much more, you know. Getting having that gear as a as a heel in the ring, giving heat, and I like to think about it like this: I'm a heel and I'm cocky, and I got my mom in the crowd, I got my dad in the crowd, I got my wife in the crowd, I got my friends in the crowd, and they're here to see the chaos show, and this is me thinking really deep into pro wrestling and as soon as my face as soon as jake atlas starts fighting back punch me in the stomach blocks my punch punches me in the face goes for the whip and maybe i reverse and give him an elbow at that point i'm extremely pissed where i get up and maybe stomp a mud hole i turn my gear up really high because i'm pissed he tried to embarrass me in front of all my family and all my friends so I want to take that deep dive and think about that. That's how pissed, that's how you start turning those gears on and off, you know? And, and also, that's when you take your opponent, and a lot of the times, you, you, you know, you slap them. At least that's what I, when I was 22 years old, you know, you'd slap the guy to wake him up. I want to get some emotion out of you. I want to get some energy out of you. Like, you don't like that, do you? You don't like me slapping you. Do you fight fucking back? That's what I want to see. And I want to... Get that emotion out of you. That means so much more than you hitting a cool spot on me. You showing me in your face that you ain't going to take this shit no more. That's like that Hogan pointing and blowing up his cheeks. Like, I'm not going to take this anymore. Man, it goes so far, you know? It, a lot of the times we're watching matches and we go, oh, this is the comeback. I don't want to know this is the comeback. I want to know... Two dudes are fighting, and I'm going back and forth. Oh, this guy doesn't want – man, he look it. Don't take it. Now I start getting on his side because we all start feeling it. We all, we all get kicked down once or twice in our lifetime, you know, three times, four times. You know, when we're down, we're down, and we think we're never going to be up again. But that's not true. We feel that, and that's why we go for these underdogs sometimes. We go for these underdogs. And if you, that's the connection that you're trying to make with the fans. And a lot of the times it comes in that heat. Making that connection, whether I'm on the hill and somebody doesn't know who I am or Jake Atlas is, and they just are sick of my shit. They're like, you ain't doing shit. You're stomping, you're kicking, and you're yelling at the crowd like you ain't even got nothing cool. 
I, I, I so want to see Jake Atlas kick you in the fucking head. You know, that, that anticipation, putting somebody on the edge of their seat, that's where we do these false comebacks. You know, I want to get you to that point of me giving heat to where you're like, fight back. Come on. It's like watching a boxing or a UFC fight. Fight back. Fight back. Don't just take it. You know what I mean? Um, and once we get that, that's where we start building our false comeback, you know? Um, and then going into it, we probably don't want to build a false comeback if we have never done a comeback yet. So if it's your first matches, first year, maybe you should just do the comeback. You know, maybe a false comeback is punch, punch, and hit the ropes and then get clothesline down. That could be a false comeback, you know. Uh, false comebacks, the true meaning of it is I really, really, really want to believe that Jake Atlas is going to start beating this fucking guy's ass and win the match. You know, I want to get to that point of – He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna beat the heel right now. This is not a false comeback. He's actually gonna beat the heel. This is gonna be the finish right now. And as a heel's job, I have to allow that. That's where Ric Flair starts backing off after he gave five chops, and 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 and, and Jake ain't taking it no more, or or Ricky Steamboat ain't gonna take it no more. And he's like, chop me again, chop me again, and it's no effect. And Ric Flair starts backing off and saying no, backing into the corner, backing into the corner. And then what does he do? He just pokes him in the eye that's a false comeback you know what i mean doesn't necessarily have to be moved but it looked like you're seeing it you're seeing it he's, he's fired up brick flair is giving him his best it's not affecting ricky steamboat but the poke in the eye will and then man if you ever seen ricky steamboat sell a poke in the eye it's it's like nobody's business man you start your eyes should start burning if you watch, watch some Macho Man, watch some Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, Macho Man, Ricky Steamboat, he gets poked in the eye. Man, you start feeling your own eye fucking burn. That's the, that's the connection you want to make with those fans. That's from him selling. That's not from actually Ric Flair poking the eye. That's from him selling it. You know, that's why the sell is so important. It's not just, ah, ah, I'm getting hit. It's, where did he hit you? What hurts? He hit me right here. All right, well, maybe you should check your jaw. Is it broken? I think my jaw is broken. Maybe you should say that to the, to the, uh, to the ref, and the ref's going to go, what the fuck? And you know, I'm just working. And, okay, you want to stop the match? No, I just want to keep going. And then, then Sabu would grab some fucking tape and tape his fucking face all the way around his head, showing I got a broken jaw. And now it made, it made me a fan. I was like, oh, my fucking God, this is one badass motherfucker. Or he would... Barnsley, give me the tape. My knee went out and he'd tape it in the middle of the match. And you're like, this guy's a fucking warrior. And I used to believe that. He is a fucking warrior, man, but he's working me, man. And I'm supposed to be, I'm his colleague, man. And I'm over here getting work because this guy's so fucking good. You know? So going that deep into wrestling, a lot of times it comes in that heat, man. It comes into how right how bad do you want it win the match finish it you know so so we want to build that false comeback we want to build that false comeback uh and it shouldn't just be thrown away you know there's many false comebacks you know i like to do it for the beginners i got you in a chin lock and i'll tell you stand up and run the ropes and i'll pull your hair and i'll put you back in the chin lock stand up run the ropes and give me two elbows and i'll give you an elbow and i'll do that back and forth just so now it's not necessarily something I might do in a match. I probably can, um, but it really builds the repetition in your head of what to do. Just keep fighting. Never stop fighting. Don't just keep taking hits. Ricky Steamboat said, um, you know, every four hits should have an answer. So I shouldn't, as a heel, I shouldn't be able to hit Jake five times. I can hit him once, Jake should hit me back. I could hit him one, two, Jake could hit me back. I could hit him one, two, three, Jake could hit me back. I could hit him one, two, three, and four times, Jake can still fire back. But if I go five, and then six, and seven, and there's not a fire back, let's end this shit already. You know what I mean? Keep that fire inside, always fighting back, even to the point where I might have a game plan as a heel in my heat to where you're fighting back too much. Slow the fuck down. Stop. But you know what that's going to do? Fires me up. Or says, oh, we're not playing pro wrestling right now. Let me fucking get this guy. What, what am I going to do? I'm going to hit you really hard in a safe place. Does that exist? 
yeah, kind of it does, you know, um, but it brings that emotion into me. This motherfucker's really trying to come back on me. No, he's not really trying to, but I'm going deep. I'm deep diving, you know, in, in, into my heel, into my heat, you know. So um, then I want to get I want to get him down to the point of right. Batman ties up or Joker ties up Batman, lowers him down into the acid fucking into the robot sharks and laughs and leaves. He doesn't just kill him. That's what he does. He laughs and leaves because that's what a fucking heel would do. Right. Right. That's what a heel's going to do in wrestling. Now that I got you down, right, we've seen it. Jericho starts doing that little kick, that little kick to the head, little shove to the head. Like, come on, get up. Is this all you got? Playing with them. Now, because I got you right where I want you. What does that usually lead to? What does that usually lead to? You know, whether I got him in the chin lock and I'm like, I got him right where I want him. What does that lead to? It leads to the hand going up, going up. And then the third one, right, he starts making the comeback. We all hate doing that because we don't want to look like Hulk Hogan all the time. So maybe we'll do it on one, you know. Um, but it leads to the comeback, building, 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 right? From a chin lock, it starts. The guy has, I have to get to my feet, right? Or Jake has to get to his feet. I got him in the fucking chin lock. First thing he's got to do is he's got to get to his feet. Now what does he do? He's got to get out. Starts building. Gives an elbow. Right? Maybe he's weak, but with each, with each elbow he gives, it gets stronger. His power starts, he basically starts taking the heel's power away. And if you're thinking of a video game, his power meter starts going up. His power meter starts going up. His power meter's right, because you can't just hit the finish in a video game. Your power meter's got to be all the way up. Same thing in fucking pro wrestling, man. You know? Um, he wants to build that power meter up until he's on fire, right? And then he's gonna ping pong me around the fucking ring. Elbow, elbow, elbow. Maybe I cut him off, I whip him, I go for the big clothesline. No, fuck no, he's gonna duck that clothesline. You know what I mean? He's gonna hit me with his, uh, with his big, big move, right? Maybe, right? what's the move gotta be? Bigger than the, than the uh, shine, right? Has to be bigger than the shine. So Jake, what are you hitting me with on your comeback? Uh, hands, back hand spring neck breaker. Back hand spring neck breaker leading to what? The crossbody from the top. Crossbody from the top, right? Look at he went from the floor to the top rope. It's building, it's building, it's building. That's where we want to go. And then we can take it home. We don't even have to do anymore. We could take it home. You know where else you could take it home? You know where else you could take it home? In a false comeback. Now we're rewinding all the way back. I'm giving heat to Jake, right? I'm giving heat to Jake. I'm giving heat. And we've seen this. I'm giving heat. I'm giving heat. I'm giving heat. I'm giving heat. And maybe he, I whip him off the ropes and he does that back handspring and he hits me with it. Boom. That could be a finish right there. It's over. We don't even have to go to comeback. We don't have to go to uh, false finishes. We don't even have to go to finishes. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because that's what builds these false comebacks and these false finishes. So maybe we're in a best of seven series. And I was right in the middle of the heat. We had just started our match. We're maybe five, six minutes in, and I whip him. I, I think I got him right where I want him, and he hits me with that back handspring. Pins me, one, two, three. So when we wrestle again, or we don't even have to wrestle again, he wrestles somebody else. When he hits that back handspring, and if he wants his opponent to look strong, and maybe he's finished me and six other guys with that move. So if he, in this next match, and he's taking the heat, and if he wants, he wants the next guy to look stronger, you know, because that's what we want to do. We want to build, build, build. Then he's going to hit the, uh, the back handspring in the heat. And what's, guess what's going to happen? The guy's going to kick out. And then he's going to cut him back off. That's just adding a little bit more depth to your, to, your, to your match. But it's just teaching you how to build those falses and those false finishes. You know, uh, it has to be a finish first in order for it to be a false finish. You know, I think that's very important. Um, I think a lot of times we, will hit edges finish and call it a false finish, even though we've never used it as a finish personally. I think sometimes it gets a little mixed up in there. I think, uh, I like to think, you know, why doesn't my super kick finish people, but uh, Shawn Michaels does, because he's, he's educated feet. He's an expert at the super kick. You know what I mean? I like to think that. So, um, but I'd like to also think that you should build your own falses. And then where it comes with your, you know, with what you choose to be as a finish, you know, 
right? We can end a match in the middle of the heat and it could be what we would perceive to be as a false comeback or a false finish. And that could be the finish, you know? And if we do that, then leading up and people follow us or people follow our matches, they start, they start catching on to what we're doing. You know, especially on, you know, definitely on where Jake is on TV, but also on the indies, you know, with social media, we're able to put anything we want out. This is my move set. This is what I do. You know, these are my five moves of doom, you know, and, and you can expand on that. So, um, so we're in the middle of the heat. We want to build to the comeback. Jake built his comeback. Um, and, uh, right. He does his, uh, his full comeback. Um, and, uh, so that would be, I think that's number five is the, the small false comebacks and how to give them and when to get them. And number six is the full comeback, you know? So once we do the full comeback, we're kind of full circle again, right? It's like Jake is doing a shine again, you know, it's like, uh, everything is full circle. We go from the initial cut, right? Cause he out wrestled me. And I initially punched him in the face in the middle of the match. And I can give him more. I don't have to just give him a punch and whip him and he shines on me. Maybe I punch him and, I don't know, chop the shit out of him around the ring. And then he does his, uh, his shine. You know, but everything is just repeating itself. So, and then I give my heat and then he goes for a bigger shine, right? Which is called the comeback. You know, so it's just, when you start thinking of it that way, it just really makes it so simple and so easy. You know, and I know for me, I've been studying this for years, uh, but, you know, first time you're hearing it, um, and then I'll go ahead and post, I think that's what I'm going to do, I'll post on the, uh, on our, uh, our Zoom uh, ca- our, uh, thing on the uh, Santino Brothers page to, uh, I'll post what we're talking about so you guys can actually break it down and see uh, what I have written down. Um, but yeah, so that would lead to your comeback. Uh, what... Uh, what comes after the comeback if we're going to continue our match, Hyde? Do you know? Do you know what? So we just hit our big comeback, and now it's time for the uh, – for what? What's coming uh, next? Either do, like, falsies or, like, another cutoff and then into, like, a falsie or just go straight to the finish. Yeah, you could even repeat again, and you can give him more heat again. Maybe this is your WrestleMania match. And he does his comeback, but we're going to say that we're going to put a comeback in the middle of the heat, and then we're going to keep giving heat. You could do that. Right? That's why I like to say there's no rules about how you're telling your story. Does it, does it look good? Does it make sense? Is it safe? And if you can say yes, 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 then, it, then you can go ahead and do it. But, you know, for our purpose here, yeah, we are going to go to our false finishes. But then going back to how do we get a false finish? You have to finish your opponent with some of these moves first. So maybe, maybe your first match isn't going to have a false finish. I don't know. It could. Hey, maybe you're hitting a move and everyone thought it was the fit. Everyone thought you were going to win, you know, so it could work, you know, but I like to build these moves to where this is a finish. This is this. My neck breaker is so devastating. It's a finish. My neck breaker is so devastating. It's a finish to now somebody kicks out of it. Blows my fucking mind away. It just scare me. I don't know what to do next. I hit him with my best fucking move. But you're probably going to lose this match now, you know. Or maybe you have a new move you want to debut, you know. So you can throw away this move as a false finish, you know. So, you know, Jake makes his comeback, you know. He goes to the top rope. He hits that that big cross body. Could be that false finish, you know. He could hit me with that big cross body. One, two, kick out. What they used to do in the 80s was they would hit the big cross body. I would pull his thigh. We'd go roll right over, and I'd hook his tights, hold the ropes or whatever, one, two, three. <clears throat> and, um, you know, you're doing that. So you took a move like a cross body, which was a finish. Now you made that a false finish because I countered it into a roll and hooked his tights, you know? Um, one, two, three. And then what they did, they fast forward. That was what they were doing in, in, uh, in WWF, right? Everybody was, was winning with the uh, K-Man connection, was winning with the crossbody off the top rope, crossbody off the top rope. And then one of the heels did the rollover, held the tights. And so for, for a little good while, that was every time someone went to the top rope for a crossbody, it was always countered, always countered. And that was always the finish. And then you know what happened? What ECW did and Raven, they did that same shit. 
where you're crossbody off the top rope, the rollover, and we're like, oh, we watched WWE for so many years. That's the finish. They kicked the fuck out. Blew my fucking mind away. Oh, my fucking God. And that's because, you know, we're zigging when you're zagging. You know, that's we're, – we're faking you out. And it's, it's like one of the, the greatest spots that I always loved was in a death match with Supreme and Messiah. And I just watched it the other day where they set up a table on the outside early in the match. They fought, they fought, they fought. They went for a powerbomb counter, went for something else countered. They actually ended up going around the ring, going in the ring, and forgetting about that fucking table. They set up. Then they end up going for a superplex inside the ring. At least that's what we thought. And they ended up fighting and superplexing right outside the ring. And we thought, you know, my brain was they're going this way. And they ended up going fucking that way. And it blew my fucking mind. Like it scared the shit out of me. Because when you think what you, you if you think you know what they're gonna do next, and you turn right instead of left, doesn't matter how subtle it is, doesn't have to be a huge move, it's gonna blow minds, you know? Um I did a devastating move with Dynamite D once. He went for a Frankensteiner. I stopped him and pile drove him. You know, as he went down for the Frankensteiner, I just stopped and pile drove him. And everybody lost their fucking mind, you know? Um, and, and, and yeah, it was a cool move. But really what made them lose their mind was doing something that we didn't expect to see. So how, what can we do to do that? Well, you take something that's, maybe you take something that's popular, you know? I don't know. What do people normally do? What do people normally finish with? How do you zig them when, you know, when they're zagging? How do you switch it up on them? That's usually how you blow people's minds. It's not just, you know, it's like, you know, you, you put them on the, uh, you put them up for a move and you think they're just going to do a suplex and they end up turning into a falcon arrow and dropping down. It's like, whoa, I did not expect that, you know? and that's that's what really blows people's minds. And that's just, I think that's just like kind of blowing people's minds in, in finishes. Um, so, you know, going back to the false finishes, I think that, that, that also works, you know, the same way, which is just, you know, hitting a move and they kick out, it just blows your mind because they cut, they kicked out, you know? Um, but how do we do that? We have to hit, hit the moves first, hit the moves first, you know, um, there's no rush. You're going to have 3000 fucking matches. You know what I mean? Don't do everything in, in your, in your first match. Three moves. I like to think of three moves. You know, if you're, if you're talking to me, I'm probably gonna do do a neck breaker, a leg drop, and then I'll I'll throw in my power slam, and I'm gonna say that uh, maybe if I really want to get the point across, I'm gonna tell the commentators, uh, please say that when I hit the power slam, the, the 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 pain shoots up and down the spine through the neck, and then so now they can help me out a little bit with the moves that I'm doing, and that's going real deep, you know, telling your commentator, and plus I'm telling you they, and I think Alyssa could speak on this, is is they. They need help, you know. What? What? Otherwise, I'm going to be talking about something else. So maybe I should be talking about you. What do you do that's interesting? You know, um, what? What's a uh, a point in your life that I could talk about? What do you want to talk about this move? How do you want to get this move over? What do you want to call this move? You know, I mean, the commentator says the move's name, and maybe that's not the move's name, and it could be forever known as that name. And I've had that happen. And why? It's because I'm not talking to my commentator. So you shouldn't have a relationship with your commentator, um, and really help you get over some of your stuff. You know, um, let me see, is Alyssa still with us? Maybe you could speak on that a little bit. Uh, hey everybody. So, uh, yeah, so does it, does it, you tell me, like, uh, if you don't know somebody, how hard is it to call a match? It's not as entertaining as it could be if you talk to the person. <laughs> um, no, I think that that's a huge thing as far as you were saying with establishing a finish as a finish. It's if I know either the name of something and it sounds devastating and the commentators can sell for like, we're, we're basically in stereo telling the audience either on a live stream or if it's live to the audience there, we're telling everybody, Oh my gosh, what this person in the ring is going through. Like you were saying where the pain is hitting them. Um, that can help over the course of a few matches. Like, oh my God, the dream smasher, this is it. Like, oh my God, this has to be it. Um, just to kind of make it bigger and larger than life uh, to really cement that as, as a finisher. One of my favorite lines was uh, Heather Monroe versus Andy Brown. And you go, 
she was going for bitch better have my money. <laughs> it got countered. Oh, I was like, I, did, I had no clue that's what the name of that move was. And I think there's people that were commenting about it. But it makes it very interesting because I think if Heather didn't tell you that, yeah. you would never got that over, you know? And I think something that, that's, that's really cool. Like, I used to have a move. I do. And I call it the Gonzo Bomb. For some reason, everybody wants to call it the Falling Star. Why? Because I didn't talk to my commentator. And the one guy, Chris Claus, she said he called it this. And that was it. Now, every time I try to correct people, it never gets corrected. That's it. That's like, I'm wrong. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, it's, it's so important to have that relationship uh, with your commentator uh, because it's, it's going to help you out so much more, you know? And, 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 and what are we doing in wrestling? Yeah, we're showing moves, but we're trying to connect with the crowd, connect with the people, connect with everybody, from the referee to the, to the people in the gorilla position, to the fans, uh, to the people watching on television. You know, um, we want to connect to them and really touch their hearts. You know, get to the point of when you turn heel one day, people are going to cry and be angry about it, you know? And, 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 right? And there's no reason, right? We always get this thing, wrestling's fake or this, that, and the other. The comedian was saying wrestling's fake. It's like, it's so much more than just fake or not, you know? And sometimes I like to think they just don't understand and it's okay, you know, because it's about really touching people's lives like we all have that wrestler that we were let we have that vision when we were little or when we first got into wrestling and maybe we were older i don't know but we have that vision you know mine is sabu seeing him really limp up and down a stair uh because he gave us the heart and soul to the smash and and he was blew his knee out and i remember that and we all we're, we all have that in us you know and i think that um when we work really hard on trying to connect with the fans, you're going to have a 14 year old chaos run outside the, the boys and girls club to see Sabu hop upstairs just because you're a mark and you want to see more, you know? Um, but that's the connection that I, that I made. And that's when I said, that's what I want to do. But go through tables and all that. I don't know about all that, but that's what I want to do. This is cool. Mm -hmm. I saw some good guy give his heart and soul, you know, and there's so many people watching watching all of us, you know, and w whether we think so or not, you know, there's somebody watching and, and you're inspiring them. So um, I appreciate you guys like working hard and, and really uh, putting your passion into it. Because I think there's no other way in pro wrestling. You know, I think there's no other way. Um, you kind of get in so deep to where there's, you, you can't stop doing it. You know what I mean? And I don't know if any of you have ever felt that, but I felt that where you get in so deep and you're like, I got to keep going, you know, to see what's on the other side. Um, but that's just the passion, you know, behind it. And if you have that passion, you can connect with those crowds, you know, and all the moves and everything in between all that and all the spots and all that is cool. Um, and that's maybe, you know, killing time on video, but connecting with that crowd is the moment. That's what, you know, I think WWE is really big on that. They talk about the moments, you know, the moments in wrestling. Um, it, cause it is, it's, it's so important. You know, my uh, my uncle passed away, as most of you guys know, this last Wednesday, and there was a flood of emotion and love that was coming through. Uh, people talking about, they were actually tagging me and saying, this is my moment with your Uncle Supreme. And it was just so many wonderful moments that that honestly, man, me, me, me and Supreme, we just, man, we just wanted to wrestle and have fun. We never thought we were going to connect with nobody. We had no clue. We weren't even trying to do it. We were just giving our heart and soul to what we love to do. You know, and to see the love pour out, it's that's why I just want to reiterate, especially this week, is that, man, there's somebody out there that you're inspiring, whether you'd like it or, or not, or whether you know it or not, you know? No matter how, what your attitude is, you know? You might have the, the, the slice boogie attitude, and then, man, that's someone's like, that's my shit. I dig that, man, you know? Maybe some people are like, I can't stand it, you know? But everybody's different. That's why we say in wrestling, it's like we have so many flavors of ice cream, and there's room for everybody, you know? You just hit, we have to find our niche, find out what works, you know? And I like to always say, hey, man, love what we're doing. Love what we're doing. The more we love what we're doing, it always leads back to having a better match. I guarantee it. It leads back to, um, I know we're talking about all these stats, and, hey, number one is established face for seal, and number four is given heed, number six is false comebacks and full comebacks. Give your heart, man. You know, hey, read these notes that will put down, you know, do your finishes and do that and make it cool, but give your heart and soul to pro wrestling because you shouldn't be taking bumps. 
And man, these long ass rides, if you don't want to give your heart and soul, you know, if you want to do it on a, I don't know, a hobby basis, I, I don't, I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it because I guarantee you everybody that I've seen do it on a hobby basis falls in or they fall out. It's one or the other, you know, mm -hmm. nobody kind of sticks to it as a hobby. I'm pretty sure there's somebody, uh, but the majority is they give their heart and soul to it. Um, and you can't go wrong, you know? And I, I'm just quoting the great wrestler is Riley Piper, man. That's what he told me. I said, what do you, Mongo went up to him with the mic. What do you do? You know, what do you points printers to give to uh, aspiring wrestlers? Stop with all those stats and just get your heart, man. That's kind of from Piper, man. That's like not the biggest dude. You know what I mean? Didn't have the coolest fucking moves, but man, it's Piper. You know, that's legend, you know? So I think a lot of times maybe we can't understand it uh, as we're young because we can do more. Um, but put it in your back pocket and you'll know down the line when you become smart enough, you'll know if it's good advice or not. You know, nine times out of 10, probably 9.9 .9 times out of 10, any vet that's telling you something, I think it's good advice. There's some out there that are steering you the wrong way, but that's, that's where I say don't trust anybody. Put it in your back pocket, find out for yourself, figure it out for yourself. Get heat for yourself. Don't take on nobody's heat, right? Same, same, same way of thinking, you know? So. Um, I think what we're going to do, uh, maybe we'll open up to some questions if anybody has any questions. Um, and then I think what we'll do on Thursday is we'll close out the, uh, the, um, the match breakdown with, with actually uh, doing a match, uh, showing a match, um, and showing all these pointers. Um, and then there's other matches that you find so interesting. And I always love watching a Bret Hart match where he's given what I like to say, and I've never heard this term, um, so I like to call it face heat. You know, it's in the 80s, and it's him and Anvil, and, and, and they're fighting. And, you know, they're faces, uh, but they're fighting a couple of jobbers. And obviously, the jobbers aren't going to necessarily uh, give the Hart Foundation heat. You know, they could. Uh, but what, what I actually saw was Bret Hart and Anvil just giving face heat, just kind of beating the guys up until they finished them. And I was just really blown away and surprised. And I was like, wow, that's a different way to tell a story. I've never seen that. Um, Try to look up some of those. I'll try to find it for you. Maybe we'll watch it uh, just for a different type of match. Um, but I think it's just very interesting because people do different stuff. Like, right, we, if you bring this to anybody and you say, this, these are the seven steps to a match, they're probably going to laugh you out the building. So it's one way to call a match. And I like to say it's one way to call a match for someone who's learning how to do this, you know, whether you're eight years in or eight weeks in, you know, I think this is, this is really what's going to help you. Um, so, um, let me, uh, take a look here. Is there anything that Ruby or, uh, even Guy, I, Guy Cole's here. I didn't even see Guy Cole, Darwin and, uh, Jake Atlas, Slice Boogie want to add to the match breakdown or anything that we were talking about right now? And if you do, just go ahead and, uh, speak it. Uh, while my mic is on, I'm just going to jump in really quick. Um, Joey mentioned that if you were to tell someone uh, these steps, they'd probably laugh you out the building. Um, and he's probably just being modest. I would disagree because that's, I mean, that's talked about even here at the Performance Center. Um, and the, the, uh, the important thing that you should take out of that is that it just goes to show that, you know, there is a foundation to this and you should stick to that foundation until you perfect it. Um, uh, often, uh, as you guys are also aware, we deal with people who have no idea what this is. You guys have a preconceived idea of what it is because you guys were all fans. We literally pick up people who have no clue what it is. They don't know what, it, what it's called. They don't even know where it came from. And, and they literally have no... I'm not exaggerating. They don't know what this is. Um, and for them, the common thing that's always told is this is the, and literally these steps are talked about. Um, the, this is the foundation of wrestling. You are not leaving this foundation for like five years. Like you, you need to perfect this until 
you know, obviously there are some special cases. There are people who just come in and are these larger than life people um, that sometimes it's something that's out of our control. But I just want to, amongst other things, I'll let other people talk, but uh, that's just one of the things I wanted uh, to kind of touch on when Joey said that this isn't going to leave you. That That is very true. Um, and definitely take the time to study this um, this formula because it, it's a formula for a reason and it, it's it's going to be a formula forever. When you become more advanced, guys like Slice, Ruby, um, Darwin, we can all attest that guy, we we can change it up now because we understand it, you know? But until you can understand the formula, you kind of have to like stick to it. Um, a good match, Joey, I don't know if you remember, that I recommend is uh, Brett versus um, one, two, three kid. Um, I really enjoyed that match because if if you guys know the story of why what why X Pac was called one two three kid, um, I this is all new to me, which is why I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, one two three kid is called one two three kid because he beat Razor Ramon, obviously, right? Um, and and so he was named he was a jobber. So in the match with Bret Hart, what I'm getting at is one two three is X Pac did the same moonsault that he beat Razor Ramon with. Um, in the championship match with Brett, and he used it as a falsy. And I, I don't know, I just wanted to, to kind of touch on what Joey was saying, that sometimes these moves have to be established as something happening for it to, have, to really solidify itself as a falsy. Uh, people thought, people knew that X-Pac won with the moonsault, he beat Razor Ramon, so, you know, people thought that maybe he could win this championship from Bret Hart with that same move, but then Brett kicked out. Um, so just a couple of notes from that. Yeah, and that, you know, I think as a uh, as a youngster, it's 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 hard to really not do everything in a match. You know, I want to hit the moonsault, and I want to hit the Frankenstein up from the top rope, and I want to do this, I want to do that. I'm guaranteeing you, man, less is more. And, and the reason I preach that is because, like, man, I started like 15, 14, 15 years old in this business. And I went, like, I kind of went through these waves of, like, 26 years in this business of, no, dude, shut the fuck up. You're just an old guy that can't do this cool stuff, and you're just trying to hold me down. To now, man, I'm preaching that shit, you know? And, 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 and I, can, I can tell you, I'm not trying to hold you down. I want you guys to do 25 times better than I've ever dreamed about doing, you know? So... I can really say from the bottom of my heart, when I tell you less is more, I believe it's going to make your wrestling better. Um, and I have the, 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 my best interest for you, you know, but I get it. And I, I'll even say it to some of the students. I get it. You, you don't, you won't listen to me, you know, cause I didn't listen to guys like Chris Candido or Terry Funk when they would tell me something that's Chris Candido and Terry Funk. And I go, well, who the fuck am I? That was world champions, you know, combined right there multiple times over. And they were telling me what to do. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so I'll even understand the waves in wrestling. I'll understand how old are you? Are you 22? You just started? Oh, yeah, you're probably not going to listen to what I got to say. That's why I tell people, put it in your back pocket. You know, because I know you ain't going to listen to me right now. You know, and as you get to 30, you get to 30, 35. And I don't know, what is that? I think it's about 15 years into the business. Uh, then you start thinking, I'm owed something. I'm owed something. I've seen that. I saw my buddy Bo Cooper go through it. Like I saw myself go through it. I'm owed something in this fucking business. Luke Cox told me, no, you ain't owed shit in this fucking business. That's guy younger than me, man. And that's true. This business doesn't owe me shit. But I see these waves 20 years in. Then you start, you start getting that. I don't, I might not in competition with anybody. 25, I want to really give back. I don't know what 30 years has to hold. I don't know what 35 years has to hold. And, and I'm going to be smartened up by then, you know, getting smarter and smarter. And that's my goal is to get smarter and smarter and see these waves. Um, but I think I, I like to say that I understand what a lot of you are going through, how, you know, how old you are in this business. I feel like I, I grew up in it. I was 14. I've been doing it 26 years. So I've only lived my life 14 years without wrestling at that time. You know what I mean? So I've been doing this so fucking long. Um, and I see myself go through those waves and I'm going to tell you, Hey, this is what happens at 26 years roughly. And I see it and I talk to other guys and it does. Um, and that's why I think that I believe that, Hey, these veterans, Hey, maybe when I get to 35 years, I'm going to go, Oh, that's the key. I, they are fucking with you guys. 
I'm not going to know until I get there, I guess, you know, but for now, as I feel that a lot of them are really trying to help out. It's, it's our egos that stop from listening. Um, so don't let your ego get in the way. Be calm. I used to, we used to give our guys when we were in the backyard, we used to give everybody a sponge. We say, take this sponge, not a dirty ass sponge. We give them a new sponge. You know, maybe we cut them in half because we only had so many. Um, we give them a sponge. Put that in your bag. Does anybody know why you put a sponge in your bag? Does anybody know why? I'll tell you. Nobody knows why. Okay, so every time you open up your gear bag where you got your knee pads, your gear, your wrestling shoes, your wrestling boots, your kick pads, whatever you got in there, every time you open that bag, you, sh you want to see that sponge. You want to see that sponge. Why? So you can tell yourself that I'm a sponge and I want to absorb all the knowledge that I can, as much knowledge as I can. Every time I'm coming to training, wrestling a match, doing a show, whatever the case is. And I implore you guys, get a sponge and put it in your bag. It sounds stupid. Get it. I'm telling you. We've all had those down days. I don't want to wrestle today. I don't want to do this. And you say you're something. You should put Eric Thomas's quote in there. What's your fucking why? And then you'll look at that note and says, what's your fucking why? And then you'll look over at that note and you'll see your sponge. And you remember why you're doing this. So I want to learn everything I can in this business. And that's, that should be, that should be uh, your goal. You know, Here, here's a sad note. I'm 26 years in this business and I want to learn everything. And I know I will not learn everything. I'm on borrowed time. I cannot learn everything they did in Japan and they do in Australia and they do in the South and they do in New Orleans and they do in New York and Italy and Germany and England. You know, I hopefully I pray that I do. Hopefully I'm blessed that I can do that. I don't think I will. So uh, everything, any knowledge that I can, as I can get, I want, I want it. I want it all. I want all the podcasts. I want everything. Give me the good, bad, and the ugly. Everything. Give it to me. I'll learn from what, what not to do if you, if you tell me the bad. You know, I'll learn what not to even think of if you tell me the ugly. Or even if you tell me the ugly and the bad, I'll learn how to fix it and make it better. You know, so give me everything. I want to absorb it all. So get a sponge. Put it in your bag so that I can remind you. Put your sponge right now. Since we're not going to train, put your sponge by your computer. You know? To remind yourself that you want to absorb everything, everything that uh, that we can learn in this business, you know. And I think that's that goes back to giving your heart, man. Don't worry about making it. Don't worry about uh, what your what your popularity status is, how many followers you have, if you have a viral video or not. Don't worry about any of that fucking shit, man. Don't worry about the money, you know. Love this fucking business. I'm telling you, the the more you worry about the money. The more it makes wrestling fucking tough because then you're like, fuck this guy because he told me he was going to pay me this and now he's only, he only paid me that. And you have a bad night. You don't want to have a bad night, man. Man, because you want to absorb. You don't want, you don't want your focus to be on some, some other shit that don't matter in five years, man. You know? So love it. Love it, love it, love it. And I guarantee you, whatever your fucking goal is, I guarantee you, whatever your fucking goal is, you'll reach it. Put in the work and love it. Put in the work and love it. And I'll tell you what, if you don't fucking reach it, you should do what you fucking love. You know what I mean? So um, I know we're, we're kind of under than two hours today. So if, if, uh, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and bust them out. Uh, just go ahead and speak. I might not be able to see your hand raised. Uh, and if you have anything that you want to add, uh, go ahead, and Joe. I see you raising your hand. But what's your question, brother? Um, in regards to like when you're taking heat and you want to show emotion, let's say you're planning to wear a mask and you can't really have like facial, uh, reliable facial expressions. What are some good like uh, ways to express like or sell basically? Like, I, hey man, I could tell you probably all these great wrestlers to watch. I'm gonna tell you, man, watch Charlie Chaplin and watch some 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 mimes that you know they're using their body and everything. I can tell you to watch wrestlers, but man, if you watch that. Those silent fucking movies, that's really going to get to you. You know what I mean? How do you act everything out? Uh, you're putting a mask on. Now you have to really, how do you, how do you show pain with a mask on, right? You show it by holding your back. And, and also, when you're in that fucking mask, make the pain facial expression. You know? I think a lot of times, 
and and uh, you know, um, re- like the guys wrestling at this these these empty arenas now. We used to go. There'd be so many people. There would be so fucking loud. We can go. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't do that shit now. You got to really have something to say. You got to have something to say. So same fucking thing. If you're in that mask and you're giving heat, make your facial expressions. You know what I mean? Uh, show, like, be very, you have to be so much more animated, you know, if you want to wear a mask. Incredibly animated. I mean, I think, obviously, man, straight up, you know, I'm going to say, if you want a wrestler to reference, watch El Santo. You know, he gets, that's, that's his job, is to get beat up, make the comeback, and then have everybody go ape that's when i say go ape shit i'm actually talking about el santo hijo el santo when he goes to the fucking top rope and he does a crossbody everyone's going ape shit you know he actually told us it was we had him on our show he was like hey not us i think the young bucks were on that show too he said hey don't be doing cool stuff off the top rope because no one's going to care about my crossbody at the end of the night <laughs> and we were like fuck you man you better fucking come up with something better that was young me. Now I'm like, yeah, hey, hey, guys, you know, we got El Santo here, man. He's the legend. He's doing the crossbody at the top rope. Ain't nobody do the fucking crossbody, you know, uh, which also goes to another point. I have to say, watch everybody's match, man. Don't be doing a cutter if somebody else did a cutter. Hey, maybe it's your fucking finish. Hey, change it up, man. Change it up. No one wants to see the same shit on a card, you know. I'm guarantee you, like that's boring. It kind of is boring, and we start grading it. Oh well, that one wasn't as good as this one. Do your own shit. That's but you gotta watch these matches. So you gotta be able to call your match. You know, I guarantee you, you're first calling it. You're gonna be nervous as fuck, and you're probably not gonna watch the matches. But you gotta try. Clear your head. You gotta, you gotta use that mentality sometimes. Clear your fucking head, man. You know, if you keep going over in your head, keep going over the match in your head, keep going over the match in your head, you're going to start mixing it up. You're going to put the heat, you're going to put the comeback where the shine should be, you're going to put the shine where the finish should be, and it's just going to be all messed up. Um, So clear your head, watch the matches. I think it's so important um, to do that. So uh, does anybody have any any other questions? Uh, Yeah, I had had something I uh, wanted to touch on about – what Jake was saying about establishing a falsy. Um, like as when he used the example of one, two, three kid with the moonsault, it was established that that had been a big victory move for him. So when he goes to do it against Bret Hart, I didn't see it, but just, I can imagine him getting up there. No, the fans are like, Oh shit. He's got the fact that he's going for the moonsault on Bret Hart. We, we believe if he hits this, it could be, that's it. And, and, you know, I got, I didn't see the match, but like, however it went down, just the fact that he even gets up there, you know, get along what happened afterwards establishes, because that move was established. Uh, for example, something that I think isn't, that's, that's a very good point that Jake made that's not in a lot of falsies nowadays. Um, like, for example, like back in the old Raw days, you know, Razor Ramon wouldn't use the Razor's edge to finish a jobber. He didn't need to. Um, so he maybe uses some whatever, maybe his big... His know, fall away. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Something, a signature move, something that you, you 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 see, but not like his his you know his his kill shot, like because he didn't need it for this guy. So like for example, Seth Rollins last night does his superplex into the Falcon Arrow, and before he even hits it, I'm going, he's not gonna. There's it's, he's kicking out at two for sure. And Michael Cole, I, I thought, almost buried it even more by saying he's done this on multiple occasions, and he just might as well have finished that job by saying, and it's never finished anyone ever. <laughs> because had he had, like, let's say he, Seth Rollins, a couple weeks ago, had a, a match with some mid-card guy or whoever, um, and, and actually, even if, you know, there's some, Buddy Murphy interferes, and he, you know, crotches the guy, now Seth Rollins hits it, and Falcon Arrow, one, two, three, we've seen him finish even a lesser, whatever, opponent with it. Now, we by belief that he might actually put Drew away with it, where, like, like Jake was saying, because it, one, two, three kids' moonsault was established, we believe. But Seth Rollins, one of the coolest, you know, combos I've ever seen in my life, never finished anyone what that I've seen. If someone has, please correct me. But I've never seen him put away anyone with it or like Sami Zayn's blue thunder bomb. It's great. But it's one effing time he puts someone away with it. It's like, oh, we believe, is he gonna ah, oh, but since we every time, every match it's a it's a kick out, it loses that specialness to me. And so I just a good point about what uh he said, establishing the falsies. And just real quick about uh you know, like we're saying, stick to the formula, especially in the beginning. But, you know, 
like if you watch a match uh, after yours, you might see the same comeback, clothesline, clothesline, big whatever. Um, and then the next match, the big, you know, another big guy, clothesline, clothesline, whatever. So, you know, try and have something a little different just in, in that sense of like, okay, I, someone else is probably going to lose a clothesline combo out of six matches. So try and have something a little different or like what he's saying as far as the, the swerve. Um, like sometimes what I like to do it, or like false comeback sense, um, make it seem like it's my actual comeback. Um, like I did the Swiss Snipes. Um, he likes to do it too. Like he's going to power bomb me and I, I, I give him a big a back body drop. So I have that moment to build up and, oh shit, I open up back elbow, drop kick. Oh shit, the fans are like starting to build up. I point at one of them like, yeah, I'm going to punch this guy in the face. I run at him and nope, he ducks, gives me a big boss man slam. So instead of me, like my, my comeback crescendoing, it crescendo still, but with him doing something on me. So, oh shit, now I might lose. Oh, now I got to get back on top. Just stuff like that. And then have, you know, obviously some kind of a cool combo that will like, substitute for an actual you know quick comeback later but that's that's all and you know i want to follow up with the point that you know what guy cole's talking about is a whole lot of anticipation right the suspense you know i like to always go back to what eric bischoff says about a match uh should have sarsa in it you know every match should have sarsa um and what is that that's it should have story anticipation Obviously, reality, suspense that he is going to beat him, he is going to finish it, and obviously, action. And if you have all those elements in your match, those are the key elements to having a great match, you know? Um, so you got to ask yourself when you're calling your match, do I have these elements? Do I have story? What's the story? Um, the story could be, you know, maybe hey, maybe it could be the brothers collide, brother versus brother, you know, or maybe the story is you broke my leg, you know, and I want my revenge, you know, um, anticipation, you know, we want to be on the edge of our seat. We, nine times out of 10, they say the, you know, greatest matches of all time, whether they're boxing, MMA or wrestling sell out. The house sells out before the match even starts, right? So the match could be crap, you know? So they build that anticipation of we have to see this match, you know? Reality, right? We don't want our – I think that's what we do in training, you know, is we don't want anything to look hokey, right? When one of your cousins doesn't know wrestling, says, oh, you're a wrestler. Uh, uh, and they start doing that goofy little thing. Like, we don't want our shit to look hokey. We want it to look real, 100% real. You know, within the realm of wrestling, because running the ropes isn't real. I couldn't throw my five-year-old nephew across the rope and have him come running back to me. You know, that's, but in the realm of wrestling, that's acceptable. In the realm of wrestling, going to the top rope is acceptable. You know, laying there in the middle of the ring, the referee should stop the fucking match if you're laying in the middle of the ring and someone's going to the top rope. If we really want to get real. But in the realm of wrestling, that's reality, right? Because it's still larger than life, you know, you know? um suspense you know i think the right well, that's that's what you're talking about is uh, i always liked uh you know building the finish the suspense of the one two three kid right hitting that moonsault on the world champion bret hart we just saw him beat a guy that's bigger than the world champion in razor ramon this could be the biggest upset of all time you know suspenseful one Two, kick out. Oh my God. Suspense, right? And then action, right? Where obviously you're going to have action in your match, whether it's a 15 minute headlock match, you're going to have action in it. So, you know, you want to build, you know, through those, uh, through the formula, right? Establish face and heel, all of that, all the way up until your finishes. And I'll post it for you guys and also post the Sarsa for you guys. Um, but you also want to have that sarsa element in your match you know i really like that i really agree with it um i think it uh it helps build your match when you're thinking about psychology if you still don't understand it but you might understand what sarsa is and you're just like okay well if you understand that then you're you're one step closer to getting that psychology down and making it easier for yourself you know um and that and then once you start you're gonna go in there and you're gonna do it and you know the guys can attest that it's 
fuck, I don't know what to do. I, I, I know what to do, but where do I put it? Uh, your timing is off. Then you start thinking about timing and all that. And that's where just repetitions are going to come in of doing it over and over. Well, what can we do now since we can't get in the ring? We can, we can, you know, put repetitions on our mind to watch it over and over and over. I mean, that's, I'm not saying it was the greatest way, but that's how I taught myself how to wrestle. You know, somebody taught me, my buddy Rob taught me how to take a bump, how to run the ropes and stuff like that. But if I want to do a power bomb, I had to watch Vader and see what he would do and what their opponents would do and watch it over and over and over. And I wasn't necessarily watching the psychology. I was watching the moves, you know, but I think if you watch the psychology over and over and over again, it's going to drill into your head. And, you know, like I said uh, last week, we, you know, we treat this not being in training um, for the most of us as, as an injury right now, you know, and it's very frustrating. You know, it really sucks. I guess one of the best parts is that you don't see everybody doing stuff that you want to do when you're injured, you know. So that's probably one of the good things about, you know, with COVID. Uh, but if we're treating it like an injury, then, you know, we want to come back better than when we, when we left, you know, and, and, and my buddy Carlos, he wrestled the next pickup is Carlito Montana. And that's what he would tell me is that, you, you know, if you're injured, don't, don't let the frustration get to you. Learn the other aspect of wrestling, learn the psychology, learn the facial expressions, the poses and the promos and uh, learn the cadences, you know, how does Roddy Piper tell a promo? Is he, you know, is he up and down? Yeah, of course, you know, um, how are maybe CM Punk? He's maybe one level where he goes up a little higher. You know, he doesn't go necessarily up and down. I mean, everybody has, you know, the way they call a match. The more you're watching people, the more you watch a character on TV, you're reading a book, the more you practice it over and over and over. Practice it on your cat, your dog, your mom, your brother, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You know, practice it over and over and over again, and it's just going to come out. It's going to be at the tip of your tongue every single time. You don't even have to think about it, you know? And I think we'll get more into that with, you know, with, with some character stuff when we start doing character. Um, but, yeah, for now, treat this like an injury. Watch the wrestling for the psychology. Where was that cutoff? What did they do in the heat? You know, uh, maybe you're going to find out this was the finish, you know? Um, but in the heat, they work the arm and they finish with the leg. You know, maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe there's not. Maybe maybe it's just bad psychology. I don't know, you know. Maybe it's psychology that actually does make sense, you know, but we'll find that out when we watch it. So uh, that's why I like to say, you know, there's no right or wrong way in a sense in pro wrestling. Does it look good? Does it make sense? Is it safe? Yes, yes, yeah, we could do it, you know, right? We want everything to be safe. We want everything to look good, and we want to, you know, have it to make sense. In, in the realm of pro wrestling, you know? And, and I think that's what we have to do as young wrestlers is try to keep evolving, try to, try to make, make different stuff up, you know? How to be different, you know? I might like, I don't know, I might, I might love Edge, but I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be the second coming of Edge, you know, I wanna be me, you know? What makes you unique, you know? You don't wanna go out there and do all the CM Punk's moves and dress like CM Punk, you know? Cause then you're just a ripoff what's what makes you how do you do that you take a little bit of king kong bundy and booker t and sabu and rick flair and macho man and you put it all together and you try to make it yourself you know what are you into you into horror movies video games you know try to have it relate because other people will relate to that you know so um biggest takeaway is is, is be unique uh, but obviously i think the biggest takeaway today is the sarsa you know having that sarsa in every single match um, i think is so important so um is there anything else that anybody wants to add or any questions that he, uh yeah ruby i see ya uh, Go for it. Okay. uh no i just wanted to touch on uh can you hear me um i just wanted to touch on uh when you were talking about wrestling by numbers yes so um so one of the things that i've had actually quite a few of the beginners uh and intermediate talk to me about is uh getting stuck when they're like in open ring and freezing up when they don't know what to do um one of the things that i always tell them is to pick five moves that you know you could do and make those like your five moves so you always have them in the back of your head and you don't just pick the five you pick the five and then you place them in order of magnitude where let's say 
uh, you do a boot, okay, that's a level two. You do a Samoan drop, okay, that's a level five. You do, you know, a pile, not that you're doing pile driver, but pile driver, that's a level eight. And so you take those five moves and you rank them by magnitude. This is my level one move, this is my level five move. That way, when you're going through a match, you know, okay, I'm stuck, okay, what's level one? Okay, let's go for the big move. Okay, I'm stuck again, what's my level two move? Let's go for, you know, this one that, um, but there was something that I did once upon a time, Joey, and I showed you, and you really liked it, so I wanted to bring it up, is that uh, after I'd gone through training and everything, I started writing down every single move that I do and rank them all by magnitude. So I just put them on post-its, and I'm like, okay, my soul eater, this is up here towards the high. This is like a level 10 move. Um, I do a Samoan drop. Okay, well, let's say if soul eater is 10, a Samoan drop would be level 7, so I'm going to put my post a little bit lower. And so I had a wall where I had all my moves on the wall um, ranked by magnitude lowest to highest. So that was something that actually really helped me at the beginning to figure out what I wanted to do in matches more. And it really puts out a visualization so you know what you should be doing, what you can be doing at certain levels in matches. And not only that, you could, like if you want to get nerdier with it, you could divide it up by body part, you know. Maybe you do a kitchen sink, okay. So my finisher is the soul leader, it's a spear, I need to be working certain body parts. Okay, let me look at this. I do the, you know, kitchen sink, I do uh, knees to the guts hair, I do, you know, shoulder tackles. You just pull it all out, it makes it more visual. And it actually, since we have a lot of time right now, I actually might go through and read this just because um, things are changing and obviously wrestling is changing, we're all changing with the times right now. So it's a good time right now to revisit everything you do, everything in your arsenal. And uh, just pick through, like, I only have, I started doing an Axe D18 driver uh, recently. So now I need to figure out all those moves I did to the gut because I used to do a spear. Now I need to figure out a whole new, a whole new set of moves that maybe work the head and shoulder area more. So this is actually, it's a really good time right now just to go through your whole arsenal and to figure out where everything is placed and where you could place it in your match. That makes sense. Yeah, I think that's that's very important is and I really like that's why I say get a book, hey, get a poster board like Ruby's saying and make it visual, you know, that's you know, that's what Arnold says. You know, put the physique that you want next to your mirror so you see it every day because it's visual, you know. Um, and I think if, if it's so important to make it visual, make a book, uh, make a a page full of cutoffs, you know, and I think even doing what Ruby says is going even more detailed. These are my gut moves, this is working the neck. This is working the leg and so on and so forth. Um, and then it kind of really just takes the thinking out because you're studying your book. You probably should know your book like the back of your hand. Um, and then it makes it so much easier. You don't even have to think anymore, you know, because you because there's certain moves that, hey, this move, uh, you know, might work the, you know, German suplex, for instance. I don't give great German suplex, so I don't have it in my arsenal. I try not to have it in my arsenal, you know. Um, so that way you're going to have that that list of your moves, um, not just necessarily these are moves that work the neck, but these are moves that work the neck that I do, you know, or work the back or so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I definitely think it's so important. And then that board also uh, gives you an idea of what moves are I trying to get over? You know, I'm trying to get the soul eater over the Samoan drop, you know, and I think that's so important. And then, and if you're, if you're a new guy like Christian and, and you haven't done any matches, you know, um, it's still, you can still get your book. You can still write, write down what your cutoffs are, what, uh, what moves you want to work the body part, you know? Um, and then if you, if you don't know these actual moves, I actually have a list that I can go ahead and send you guys. So just go ahead and, and, and hit me up. Um, and then what makes it easy is you have the move name. You can look it up on Google to break it down. Um, or you can always ask me, you know, and I'll break it down for you, probably show you some video of it. Um, but I think that's so important is to write it down because, um, you know, that old saying, and there's a lot of old sayings that I love, you know, but there's an old saying that says, I mean, I think it's just like, it's like something cool. Like when I was young, I thought it was just something cool that somebody would say is like, hey, kid, I forgot more than you know. That's a real fucking thing, man. It's 100% real. Like there's, I'll watch videos of because I've been, my uncle passed away, so I've been watching a lot of old matches, and I'm like, I don't even remember doing any of this. I did a handspring um, dive to the outside, and I was like, it, it didn't look the greatest, but I should have kept working on it. It would have looked great, but the, like, 
it's a real thing. You will forget a lot of the stuff. So it's so important to write it the fuck down. You will. You think you think it's so cool that you'll never forget it, but you will. You will. You got to write it down. I've done that. I'm on the treadmill and I'm like, I got this cool spot. It's the best spot that I've ever come up with. I'm not going to forget it. So I won't write it down and I'll forget it. You know, so write it down. It's so important. Write everything down um, because you will forget. You will forget. You'll have a whole list of moves that you, I forgot I used to do these. You know, so so get it written down, guys. Um, let's see here. Anybody else have any questions before we end it up? Um, if you do, just go ahead and speak out in case I don't see you. Uh, Dane, I think I see yeah. you working yeah. your hand. Yeah, just open to anybody established, and especially Jake, like, because I'm super green. <clears throat> when it comes to matches, like, do you get an outline of what they want you to do, or how do you kind of make up your match and what it's going to end up looking like? Is that something that producers tell you, or how does it work for both indies and established companies? I'm curious. Um, I think that on the independent level, it, there's definitely a freedom to it. Um, and I think I would just I would just reiterate the fact that um, I, Ruby has mentioned this, and, and Austin and, and Joey has mentioned this, watch what's before you um, so that you don't structure the same way. Um, if you're on, on the independence, you know, especially we, when we were at, when it was, when everything was going on, we were, at, we were getting to a point where um, everything, you should, you should want to steal the show every single time, uh, but that, that's for a different, conversation and there, there's a certain way you can do that but 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 yeah, everyone is so fixated on trying to steal the show that we were getting to a point where everything was just redundant um and it was it was it, it was almost becoming oversaturated um in my opinion and so you have to really be the one that says how can i make my match different um than than to what was going on that's why you know people like orange cassidy were getting over was because everything was just so boom 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 pwg 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 and he decided to do just something different whether it was somebody else's liking or not um he still did something different and got people interested into what he was doing um and that's so important to do because you know, transitioning now into uh, into a, a televised product, um, it's getting to a point where uh, the producers help you help guide you, but they don't put it together, and so you have to be experienced enough to know how what makes sense. You can't just put any random indie match on a TV show. So you, you, you have to be now more um, mentally prepared for how to present something to, to a television audience because the producer is going to want to just get your, he has so many other things to worry about. He has to worry about the time. He has to worry about relaying to the other people, the network, this is gonna happen at this time and this is gonna happen at this moment, this is gonna happen. He's, he, he doesn't want to worry about the spots that he had to come up with for your match. So you, you have to really take into consideration that prepare yourself now on the independent level to, to one, apply the formula and apply it so that it's unique to you. And I think that was something also that Joey touched on was make it unique um, to, to who you are and to uh, what you are, are kind of doing. Um, if, if I can go off on a tangent there a little bit, um, for some of the more experienced guys, uh, like, like, um, like Slice, um, and Hyde, uh, some of the newest things that have helped me and I would like to share with you guys, since it's under the match breakdown column is, um, we had, we had Edge, uh, at the Performance Center, uh, recently. And so he told us, uh, we asked a, a, a bunch of things. And one of the things that um, I told him, or I asked him was, you know, what, what, like, what kind of makes a great match? I, I, it was more specific, you know, but, but what it, it, in his, you know, he's known for, for many moments and stuff. And, and I wanted to basically know, like, 
as, as, as I'm sure Slice is aware, like what makes a great match? What makes your match stand out? You know, that's something we yearn, um, uh, especially when we've been doing it for a while, like a year, two years. And one thing that he really helped uh, and something that's helped me is he said, make your match collapsible and expandable. So find what, find something. So pick your spots, what, you know, have your spots, have your go-to moments, but have it be something that can collapse if need be, if something's not going the way it needs to go and something that you can just, you know what, we're taking this out. This isn't working. We're going to collapse. We're going to, you know, we're going to get rid of this or expand it. This is going really well. We call, we got to this point. What can we add to it? Because it's going so well. Um, and that blew my mind because it has made me call less stuff and just react in the moment. Um, and, and again, this is a more advanced uh, thing, more advanced technique because you need repetition, you know, and since you guys have had the repetition, now you can, you know, when this all goes back and you guys start having these matches again, I, I challenge you guys to, to come up with spots that you say, you know what, this is going to happen, but if, if whatever reason something goes awry, we can take this, we, we, we know how to not go to the next thing because we don't need it and if you hit every, you hit this a certain spot that you knew you were going to hit you should have it in your mind and you're in your in your and you know in your feeling as you're wrestling like oh we can add to this you know we weren't supposed to go to the outside but maybe maybe this calls for you to go to the outside maybe this calls for a clothesline over the top rope and then and then uh, catch me on the dive boom like because and we didn't even call a dive you know but it was just it was hot and we felt it um so that was, that was one thing. Um, another thing was, um, so, you know, if, if you get, if and when you guys ever get the opportunity um, to, 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 to get down to Florida, we do a lot of like uh, these like random live events, you know, and, and they're all the same. Uh, the matches are all the same on purpose. Um, they're, it, you know, they're supposed to just be literally the formula. This is why I, 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 I wanted to come on here today because the formula is so important um, for forever. Um, and, and so we do, the, we do these matches, you know, from, from the guys like Adam Cole to guys like, like myself to, to the athletes who know nothing about wrestling. We all do the same type of match in a different way. And so on one of the most, before we stopped, one of the more recent matches or one of the most recent events, Terry Taylor came to us uh, during our meeting to talk about the show. He came to us and said, um, there's this trend right now. Um, and he said, not just with us, he, he said in wrestling where the heat is going way too long and, and people are just doing way too long heat and it's unexciting, it's uneventful and it's boring. Um, so I really like the fact that Joey touched on the aspect of fighting back and he and, and, and Terry Taylor was so big on that. It, it like every match was the same. If you guys, if 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 you a basic show for us would be six matches, seven matches on the card, and it would be, uh, you know, start, shine, heat, come back, go home, and that was it. And like the heat was like very very long for every match, and all and people thought they were doing well because everyone just worked a different body part. But it, it was more than that. It's beyond that. It's, it's, yeah, please work a different body part in each match, but make it exciting. B build hope spots. So, so he talked to us a lot about hope spots. Hope spots are so important because it really, again, like Joey was kind of saying, like, it shouldn't, you shouldn't look at a match and be like, oh, that's the comeback. You should just feel it. You, should, it shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be able to see the formula happen. You should be able to feel the formula, if that makes sense. And so if you're on this ride in the match with these people, uh, with, the, with the wrestlers, you know, there's a hope going on. Like, if the heat is going too long, put in a hope. Put, put in a different type of hope. Do this, do that, do that. Before you get to the comeback, don't... It, I'm not saying... It, it's, it wasn't saying cut your heat shorter. It's engage your heat. Make your heat engaging, you know? Especially someone like Slice, who is a heel, you know, uh, don't rely only on just talking crap to the crowd and engage your face, engage the crowd into why should we hate you? Why are you on top in this moment, in this match right now? Um, 
oftentimes we go into, oh, heat is, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just in right now. And work a body part, hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. Let him stay down, let him stay down. Oh, he's, until he makes his comeback. The heat is, is a little bit more than just that. It should be the point of the match where the face is really showing that he's, he's not giving up. He's not going to give up. And a, a face isn't going to show that by just getting his ass kicked. A face is going to show that by showing resiliency and showing hope, you know, showing wanting to, to get out. So, so definitely in your, in your matches to come, uh, for the more experienced guys, challenge yourselves to come up with creative hope spots that, that, I mean, it doesn't have to be a cool move. It's literally just creativity and thinking outside the box of how you can engage the audience into, into not just going on their phone during the heat because they know what's going on, you know? Like, have them be engaged into what, what's going on because, um, yeah, we get lost sometimes in the heat and into just beating people up and just, just saying, yeah, you like that, huh? You like that? And it's more than that in this, in this day and age. It, our attention span is, has gotten shorter as, as, as humans, so we gotta, you know, keep it moving even in that, in that little, that little uh, moment. I don't know if that, any of that made sense or helped at all um, for, for the more experienced ones. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that uh, that goes back to giving your heart, you know, uh, make your match collapsible and expandable. I, th I, I wrote that down. I thought that was a great quote, um, you know, and it's, uh, you know, being able to add something to it or take away from it. You know, I think that's that, that's that's probably key point. You know, what Edge told Jake is that, you know, being able to just audible and get out of there, you know, or be able to expand it. How do we do that? Maybe you listen. You listen to the crowd. You know what I mean? Hear what they're asking for. Maybe they're asking for a move. Maybe they're asking for this. Maybe they're asking for that. Um, what are, what what are they saying? You know, and I think you, that's that. You know, the old saying, stop and smell the roses, stop and listen to what they're actually saying. And you're going to engage them more and, and you'll connect with them and they'll be a lot better. So uh, thank you, Jake, for those points. I thought there were, there were gems. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, and I think that's what's, what's great, you know, about having Jake here is that he'll, he'll tell us stuff like that. Uh, uh, because, you know, it's a gem from a world champion, you know, Hall of Famer, that, you know. So I think that was key, you know, collapsible and expandable. I, I like that. You know, I think that's going to stay with me. Um, but being able to do that, uh, being able and, and willing to do that, not staying the course because this is what we called, you know, you have to be willing to, you know, change it up a little bit here and there. So I thought that was great, Jake. Um, how, how you been, uh, how you been hanging through, Jake, uh, over there in, uh, in Florida? Um, I'm well, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that we, you know, we're still, putting a, a product out. I'm glad that I'm, I'm involved. Um, I'm, I'm, they're, they're very, they're keeping us busy as well. We're doing a lot of this stuff, same as you guys are doing. We do the same thing every week for different things. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they're providing us something to stay busy because, um, I mean, Florida is kind of reopening, but I personally am afraid of the virus. So I am staying inside, <laughs> continuing to stay inside. So they're, 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 and you know, they're a national product, so they understand the, the risks of the virus as well. So they encourage us to stay inside by providing us um, outlets like this, like you guys are doing to stay busy. And I'm having fun. And um, yeah, thank you for asking. How, how are you staying in shape? Um, so we, so our, our strength and conditioning coach uh, also puts out workouts on, on, online. So uh, we do everything in phases. Um, like there's a, there's a, there's a, a conditioning phase, there's a, a cardio phase, there's a bulking phase. Um, I'm sure this is all slices like, yeah, I know how to do all that. But, um, there's, there's different phases to, to, to what he puts out in, uh, with us. Um, and now what, what's encouraging is that the old, that like the end of it all, what I guess what encourages us to participate, because obviously he can put out those videos and we don't have to work out you know but uh the goal is to have like some sort of like combine so we kind of have to or else people will know that we didn't work out um so uh yeah and 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 he provides a lot of workouts that don't require any weights 
unfortunately you won't you know you won't be able to body build bulk up but you'll be able to stay in shape and define yourself even with just body weight workouts so i hope that i saw i, I know joey does i i was I, I go through the chat every day or not the chat the the facebook group every day just to see what's going on and i know joey has posted like some circuits and stuff that probably is just body weights that helps any any little bit helps and um that's that's what i've been doing to kind of to kind of stay in shape i bought weights and stuff but people are probably overpricing <laughs> overpricing that because it's a it's an essential product now um but yeah yeah, I, you know, if anybody is a football fan, uh, Herschel Walker, big dude, says all he did was push-ups and eat one meal a day. Whether we believe that or not, hey, maybe <laughs> there's hope without weights. You could be a jack dude um, and eating once a day, you know, because I think if you got if you want to be jack, you got to eat six times a day, right? Um, but, you know, everybody's body's a little bit different. Um, most important, guys, what do, you, what do you got? What do you got, Bug? Now that one meal he ate was like 8,000 calories. <laughs> <laughs> He's a powerhouse, though, man. He needed, like, you know, 32,000 calories. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think most important, guys, is, um, man, keep that cardio up. You know, I think if you do it in that circuit training, that's going to keep your cardio going. You know, run wind sprints down the street. You know, um, find some stairs that you can climb and push yeah. yourselves, guys. The, the, the workouts that we used to do, Joey, um, I definitely still do that. So, yeah, circuit training is like the best. It's like the closest thing you'll get to ring cardio. The closest thing is what me and Joey did for weeks before we wrestled. Um, and I think it helped. I'm sure he can say the same. I'm sure it helped us a lot with our cardio. Um, so, yeah, if you can make a circuit with anything you got, you know, um, it works. Yeah, it definitely does. Get bored of that. Get a get a deck of cards. Um, have everything. Uh, have every number or uh, you know, uh, sweet Ashley uh, means something. Push hearts are push ups. You know, diamonds are this or even the number means something. And every time you throw down that card, it's basically the your the the card is your coach telling you what to do, and you can't. I mean, you could cheat the cards, but obviously you're just cheating yourself, right? So treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Uh, most important because especially now man nobody's nobody's riding your ass but I always like the thing in wrestling no one's riding your ass anyway you know you got to be able to push yourself um, to be in, in, in your in your best promo shape best uh, best uh, physical shape mental shape wrestling shape um, having your moves down timing down footwork everything you know it takes discipline um, and I don't think any of us want to lose that uh, so I think we got about 10 more minutes. Is there anyone, anything else that uh, anybody wants to add or any other questions that we have before we end it? Got a question over here, sir. Yeah, go ahead and speak it out, brother. So in regards to finishers, I'm not sure where I heard this, but uh, the comment was made somewhere that uh, in a lot of shows and promotions now you see somebody kick out of quote the like the top rope fuckinator or something huge and it sort of takes people out of it and yet that is in vogue right now so sort of in the industry where high impact and complex finishers that are still kicked out of or in vogue how do you sort of create and cultivate a competent finisher in that sort of climate well you know there's a uh I'll butcher this quote. Uh, many people may believe wrestling is not real, but I damn sure can make them believe that I'm Sylvia real. That's Sylvia's favorite quote from Johnny Valentine. And uh, I think what you have to do is, you know, I, I and also I think there's another story when uh, Ric Flair was in North Korea. I think it was WCW and they're wrestling and he's sitting there next to the president at the time and they're watching the wrestling match and they see the guy do a military press and the president asked Ric Flair says why is he able to lift him up so easily and Ric Flair that's when he he it hit his head to like oh shit they think this is legit and I'm in a I'm in a different country and I better have the right answer and so Ric Flair told him well, you're not going to see that happen to me. 
you know? And I think that goes back to how do you make your finisher count when everyone's kicking out of everything, you know, is what I'd like to say going back to a hey, Shawn Michaels super kick is so much more deadlier than my super kick. And that's why he's able to knock out the world champ in Bret Hart and finish him, you know? And I think that that's how maybe Gorilla Monsoon used to uh, describe the moves was that this person was, this was his specialty and he works on it. Ric Flair works on that neck breaker night and day. And he was going to hurt your neck when other people give a neck breaker, but Ric Flair's neck breaker, it's over, mm-hmm. you know? And I think it's just really detailed in, in, in your wrestling is what move do you want to put over? Just because somebody's kicking out of a DDT doesn't necessarily mean you have to kick out of it. You could make that your fucking finish. You know, you can, you, we can make anything a finish. You know, I've always told this story about biggest, baddest dude out there, like Brock Lesnar. And he wants to get over a new move. So you have Paul Heyman go out there and tell him his biceps are bigger than Hulk Hogan's ever were. 32 inches bigger than his 26 inch pythons and he's got the biggest biceps and you show vignettes of brock lesnar crushing um watermelons and crushing watermelons and they're exploding and he tells them and he says if brock lesnar puts you in his dreaded headlock it's over and you build it and so brock lesnar goes out there and he takes bray wyatt out blocks on the headlock and you know knocks him out maybe blood comes out of his eyes because it's a tv show and they can make it happen you know um they he gets in the ring with another guy and he actually gets in there with randy orton and and, and the word comes out is that randy orton cracked his skull because brock lesnar's headlock is so devastating and now if you start building this fucking headlock which probably all of us here have been in a match and we've ran over the fucking headlock you know and it means nothing when we run it over but if you stop and you say this headlock is the deadliest move in professional wrestling today and you people are, are jobbing out to it, losing to it until finally, because you always want to go somewhere with it. You want to finally get to the Roman Reigns or John Cena guy who gets into that headlock and everybody's crying because fuck, we thought this was our hero that was going to beat Brock Lesnar finally. Four minutes into the match, Roman Reigns is in the fucking headlock. It's over, bro. Brock has beaten everybody with the fucking headlock. It's over. And then Roman Reigns starts peeling out and he's struggling and he's struggling, building an anticipation where everybody wants to see finally somebody defeat Brock Lesnar's headlock. And that's the payoff, right? That's the payoff. Because we're building up this heel with this move, the simplest move in pro wrestling that we've all run over, the headlock. But we're doing these vignettes of he's crushing all these melons and crushing people's skulls, and it's devastating. We're, we're interviewing them in the hospital and talking to doctors about concussion syndromes and stuff like that because Brock Lesnar is, a, is devastating with his headlock. Now we just built this move, this basic move, and we build it up. So even though somebody else might be running over the headlock, if we take our time and our effort, and putting over this move, we can put over any move out there, you know? Um, and I like to say the headlock because a lot of times we run it over. You know, we want to do the, the, the flipping pile driver and we want to do these cool moves from the top rope. When if you really get it put over about this headlock, ooh, you could scare people. You know, there'd be kids in school putting their friends in headlocks and you know what I mean? Um, but I think if you, if you take your time to put it over like that, um, it will be as important as you make it, you know? So, Will, when, when, you're doing your, when you're doing your moves and everybody's kicking out, you make your move important. You make people believe what you do is real, and you can't go wrong with that, 100%. 100%. doesn't matter if everybody else kicked out. You start explaining why they're not kicking out of this move, because I'm an expert. You know what I mean? You're putting it over. You're, you're either cocky as a heel or you're confident as a face. You know what I mean? Um, but you're putting it over and you're, you're telling people how you study this. So I used to believe Million Dollar Man was good. He didn't have a good body or anything like that. But I always believed he was good because he had the money. And I was a little kid watching Million Dollar Man. You know what I mean? And that's what made me believe. That's how we can hang with Hulk Hogan, the likes of Hulk Hogan and Macho Man who are bigger than life. Oh, because he's, he's very educated and has all the money and training in the world that he can do. You know, makes me believe. You know, so if we sit and we try to make people believe what we're doing is real. 
and it starts with us believing it's real and us believing in that damn headlock, then we can put that move fucking over um, like nobody's business, you know? So um, we have about five minutes. I'll go ahead and end it up right here, guys. I really thank you guys for tuning in. in. Um, if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and hit me up afterwards. Um, but like I think, I think it was great. Uh, thank you for Ruby and, uh, and Jake Atlas and Alyssa um, and everybody that has joined us. Even Guy Cole uh, gave his input. Um, I really appreciate that because I think it's a gem, especially, um, you know, just really uh, uh, feeding the knowledge to everybody here. I mean, I think it really helps out. Um, so, but, but the biggest takeaway for today, let's, let's go with the, 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 the formula, but also Sarsa is probably our biggest takeaway. The, the, the story, anticipation, reality, suspense, and the action. You know, we want to have all those elements, not only in our matches, but probably also um, in our promos. You know, how are you going to have action in your promo? You're going to be animated, you know, it's because wrestling is bigger than life. Use your hands, use your movements, use your eyes, you know what I mean? Make it big. That's the action that you're putting. So that should also be in your promos too, you know? Um, so uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate it, guys. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be uh, just, you know, keeping updates on, on everything. And I also wanted to bring up, like, I was thinking about maybe adding a third day. I'm not exactly sure what day we'll do it. Maybe somewhere what, what we could do is, like, uh, do some evaluations. Um, some one-on-ones is, is more in particular what I'll do is what we'll have is just kind of people scheduling in um, if they want to just kind of have a one-on-one -on -one talk with me or even evaluation. I know there's Hyde that wants me to watch a, a promo. Um, so that's what gave me the idea um, because I know a lot of people ask me for critiques um, and sometimes I don't have the time, but now I have all the time. And I think with us being interactive, that would be a lot easier than me typing it up um, on a message. Um, and then we can also watch it together as if we were just sitting right next to each other. So um, look out for that for updates this week um, on what day we'll start doing that. And then we'll get a list going. And if you guys want to want to do a one on one with me, we'll go ahead and I don't know what we'll do on time or whatever, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll get it going uh, possibly next week. So um, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, hey, guys, most important, don't get fucking lazy because when you get lazy, it's disrespectful to the people that are looking up to you. Okay. All right, guys, let's go ahead and bring it in. Let's bring it in. Here we go. Santino's on three. Santino's on three. One, two, three. Santino's. Santino's. Later, Joey. All right, All right guys. Chaos. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, guy. <laughs> See you, guys. See you, coach. Have a good night. See you. Have a good night, guys.